first time that I went to prison, I've actually gone more than once, uh, I consider it to be one of the most traumatic experiences of my life, but at the same time, one of the, the best experiences because of the understanding that I gained from seeing um, the prison in real life. You know, we all watch our TV shows and we think that we know what jail is like, and not that it's necessarily so overtly violent. I would say that the guards were really mean and nasty for no reason. They were very abusive to visitors. Um, but I, I would say that, you know, I remember when I was leaving and, and I looked over at Ross and there was a glass divide between us because there was the glass and they marched them back to their little place. And I remember thinking about how barbaric is it that in this day and age, this is how we deal with the unwanted elements of our society and that this has been going on for thousands of years. And it was deeply troubling and it's given me a lot of fuel to continue to try and raise awareness, not only for Ross, but to educate myself more about the dangers of our current criminal justice system and the prison industrial complex. On a more personal level, um, Ross hasn't really been um, in contact with too many people because you know there's an appeal and, and whatnot. You know he writes letters sometimes publicly, but in my personal experience, I would say that he's one of the most incredible people I've ever met. Um, he, I remember one time he had written me and he says, "I don't want you to worry about what's happening with your voice or what happened with me or with anything really, because as long as we're alive, there is reason to hope." And you know, look at how many times a day we're all complaining about what's going on. But this is a person that had such integrity and such commitment to this vision that even in the situation that he's in right now, he's still able to offer um, peace to others and, and a lesson to other people and to be an inspiration. And sometimes I'm driving and I'll see that there's, you know, oh, it's so nice outside, I wish that Ross could see this. But you know what, at the same time, I think that he has started a, he's kind of lit this fire where people who have become familiar with this story are now going to become much more engaged. And I think that obviously the outcome isn't ideal, but it's a start. And there are so many people in the prison and industrial complex that are in there for nonviolent crimes and there's nobody there to fight for them. There's nobody there to give a voice to um, these forgotten elements of society that we want to pretend are not there. And that's a, you know, that's, that's something where I think that we can all kind of help out with. There was a woman with, with children and she was saying that before her son, uh, I'm sorry, before her husband went to prison, her children were getting straight A's and now they're getting D's and F's. And it really reminds you of the ripple effect. It's not just the criminal that's punished. It's the entire family. And do you think that those children are gonna grow up and be productive members of society? Their chances of doing that have been diminished greatly. Um, and then that's gonna continue through their children. And they're gonna, I mean, this is a ripple effect throughout our community. And it's something that I think is, is, a, is a point that we can unite with people from both the left and the right. Um, and, and hopefully bring about some reform. And, you know, Ross's situation, can hopefully be reversed, and, and for many other families as well. Uh, Doug, you're an outspoken uh, advocate against government intrusion in our lives. What was your response to the film or uh, the, the case in general? Well, I, I think it's just truly shocking and disgusting. And instead of people watching these ridiculous crime dramas that you see on television where the, just, where the judge is wise and the jury is judicious, and the prosecutors are honorable, and the cops don't take bribes and aren't thieves, uh, and the FBI are all noble people that join it because they want to serve their fellow. This is a gigantic lie. Uh, the whole system is corrupt through and through, as far as I'm concerned, from the laws they operate under to these huge bureaucracies which have metastasized and become criminal. Uh, uh, conspiracies. I don't believe in conspiracies really, but uh, it's turned into that. Uh, so um, I wish something could be done in the case of uh, Ross, or and not just Ross, but about a million other people in this country alone that are in the same situation. But I'm afraid that uh, there's not much that can be done until the uh, old rotten structure is brought down.
And that brings us to another problem, because after a rocky structure is brought down, things don't get better, they get worse. Just like in 1789 in France, wonderful the rocky structure was brought down. Then it got worse with Robespierre, and worse with Napoleon. And in 1917 in Russia, the rocky structure was brought down. But then they got Leonard, and then they got Stalin. So I think the structure is going to collapse here because the most malignant entity on the face of the earth at this time is the U.S. government. This is perfect proof of it, although one of them many examples, but it's going to get worse after it comes down. That's just the way it works. So uh, that's not an uplifting message, I'm afraid, but I think it's the truth. George, you come from the economic side of things, but also the tech side of things. And they talked in the film about uh, decentralized markets now arriving, markets without a central figure that they can take down and then take down the entire site. How do you think that's going to change the economic landscape, or you know, what, what were your responses to the case of the film? Oh, I think things are going to stand up. Is this, is this work? Yeah. yeah, I think things are going to get better. Um, can't see you. Oh, okay. Can't see you. Thank you. Friedrich Hayek said, the root and source of all monetary evil is the government monopoly and control of money. And uh, the whole model of centralized control of money and capital gains uh, penalties for all people who use alternative monies is really the source of this problem to a great extent. And, uh, and I think that the Bitcoin blockchain and other innovations in distributed security can change this picture. And I think that uh, uh, the blockchain is a fundamental innovation in security because it changes the focus of security on concealment and centralization and firewalls and personal information concentrated in uh, particular places that invite attack to uh, security through publicity through a public ledger that is distributed across all the computers on the internet ultimately, and uh, which uh, uh, make it impossible to hack it. Now these centralized systems are all breaking down. Uh, you know, the SWIFT network, which is the vital protection for the worldwide banking system, has been uh, hacked and $60 million extracted. I mean, there are lots of examples where the centralized system is collapsing. And uh, I believe that uh, the development of new currencies will provide new freedoms and, uh, and will end this identification of the manager of the conduit with uh, the commerce that happens to flow across it. And this is a, an important, uh, to all advances in information te technology, if you, if you create a new communication system and you're uh, liable for what all the communications in it, uh, you, the system ultimately collapses. So, so I think, uh, uh, that the uh, Ulbricht case is an example of what happens with this conspiratorial world where everybody's drilling deeper and deeper and, and doubly and triply, and triply encrypting. And, and I, don't, I don't find all this very edifying, but, uh, but I do think that ultimately the promise of Bitcoin and the blockchain is more openness, more transparency, more uh, separation of conduit from commerce. And I think this is uh, a crucial to a libertarian society. Thank you. I, I agree By with the way, you. I, I will be signing books uh, at 1240 over at the... <laughs> I, I agree with George's optimism. I do think that technology is really going to lead to a lot of freedom in our personal 
personal lives going forward, but it's exciting to see what happens. Um, now, for those of you who don't know, Lynn actually uh, runs an organisation. If you go to freeros.org, if you're interested in contributing uh, to the appeal process and all of that, I, I would really encourage you to. We probably have time for just like a couple of questions, maybe one or two if anyone has some. Otherwise, I'll go ahead and ask Lynn for just a closing statement. Does anyone have a, have a question? Yeah. 